star equivalency English exam. So if you are uh, trying to appear into this exam, that means that uh, you need a kind of English equivalency. And when your education is outside the UK and uh, you need to give the equivalency of uh, GCSE English, right? So for that purpose, you have to appear in this exam and uh, get a grade of four and above. So you have to get, get a grade of four in this GCE, GCSE English. And uh, then the grade four is basically you have to get at least 48 marks out of uh, 100. So if you'll be able to get 48 out of 100, you will pass this uh, exam. So um, the outline of this exam is, is uh, it has a total of six questions, right? And then uh, the total time is uh, two hours and 10 minutes, okay? And it has got two parts. And uh, the first part is a reading exam. And there will be five questions in this. And the part B is a written exam. So in the written exam, you have to write uh, something. And there are basically two options. One is, uh, you know, based on arguments that is called argumentative and another one is descriptive. So in argumentative, you have to uh, present your arguments, maybe uh, write a letter uh, or maybe you have to write an article. So I would suggest that uh, you should attempt this uh, one because the other one will be a descriptive in which there will be a picture given to you and you have to describe that picture. So mostly uh, the people who appear in this exam are um, quite, you know, uh, old, not, they're not as young people. So maybe they have been writing letters and articles. So I think they have better capability in this one. So this one has uh, 40 marks out of 100. It has 40 marks and you should be aiming to at least get 30 out of 40 because there are the other bit in which there is quite a lot of writing. So uh, it may not be very easy for you to, uh, you know, uh, do good in that exam because that is a bit, you know, technical and uh, maybe being, uh, you know, English, not your first language. So it may not be very easy for you to do those technical kind of, you know, uh, questions. So uh, the source for preparation, I'll tell you, you can just uh, go to uh, online, AQA, uh, you know, AQA, uh, board questions, exam papers, exam papers of GCSE. Okay, so you can go to this one uh, and then you can just download the resources and you should try it. Uh, but whatever materials I have, because I had to appear in this exam, so I have prepared some, uh, you know, my own uh, materials. So I will, I've attempted rather uh, all those, uh, you know, some of the exam papers. I will upload uh, a link to download those resources as well uh, so that you can have an idea that how to attempt those exams. And uh, there is already a mark scheme there. So you can just have a look at the mark scheme as well. That is maybe a better version of how to, you know, uh, write the exam. So um, it has, uh, okay, so this paper of A star equivalency is uh, derived from uh, English language paper. So basically this one is taken from the English language and there are two papers of English language. So uh, paper one, 
and paper too. So mainly uh, the question number one, two, three, uh, four, and six. These questions are taken from paper two. And question number five is taken uh, question number four of this paper one. So question number four of paper one comes here and becomes question number five here in this. So in total, we have got six uh, questions. And first five questions are based on the reading. And this has got 60 marks. And the last portion is writing. And this bit has got 40 marks, right? So this all makes 100 marks. So uh, the, the picture portion of this question number six comes from paper one as well. So it has got two. One is picture. Okay. So the picture one comes from paper one and the letter or article uh, comes from here from this one so this is what the sequence is so question number one to four of the a star exam are one to four of the AGCC paper two and question five comes from paper one right and question six is two parts so this is broad overall uh, review of the whole exam so uh, Section A has got uh, reading assessment for mark scheme. Yeah, these are assessment objectives. You know, you I will not go into these details. Uh, objective one, two, three, four. You can just read them. I'll upload this PPT as well. Okay. So for question number one, it has got total four marks, and it is a multiple choice question. So in this one, what it will be like? Uh, they will tell you to uh, read for example uh, lines 1 to 12 of source a right and then you have to read this these lines so first you have to just focus on these lines okay on these lines and then go back to the multiple options so there will be only four options correct so there will be a couple of options, maybe around 10. And out of 10, you have to just stick those four options and it will carry four marks. So it, th this is quite easy. So there are just 10 lines you have to read and then, but you should not waste a lot of time on this. So in any case, you should not take more than four to five minutes because the time is going to be very crucial in this. So for these, this question number one, uh, the multiple choice one, you should not spend more than four to five minutes and it should have a four question marks, right? Uh, four uh, marks this one has. And qu question number two, it has got eight marks. So the sequence is like this. Question number one has four marks. Question number two has eight marks. So every question, the number of marks increase by four. So question number three has got 12 marks and question number four has got 16 marks. Question number five has got 20 marks. And then question number six has got, that is the final question that has got the 40 marks, the, the write up, the writing question, right? So every next question, has actually four more marks. So what you should aim for, when it's it has got eight marks, you should be right. You should aim to write two paragraphs, right? So that much you should do it. If it's three, if it's a twelve, then you should write three paragraphs. If it's fourteen, if it's sixteen, then you should write four paragraphs. If it is twenty you should try to write four to five paragraphs. And this one, the 41 also, you should write around five paragraphs. 
So that is how you should plan it, right? So the five paragraphs of this letter or article, it should be one should be introduction and there should be three paragraphs of uh, main body, right? Three paragraphs of main body. And the final, it should be conclusion. So this is how uh, you should be planning, right? So uh, whenever you get the topic, then you should just think that what should be the introduction. In intro, you will give just a brief overview. What is your main question? And then uh, you are going to discuss those three, like uh, the positives, the negatives, and then the third one can be just you know, uh, a combination, what you want to convey the recommendation kind of a thing, three paragraphs and at the end it should be conclusion. So this paragraph, this question number two is a comparison of similarities or differences between one element in two taxes. So uh, the, this paper, it will give you two extracts, right? So there will be two extracts and those will be source A and B. So it will ask that you have to compare only one element out of these two. So what you have to do is you should not read all, you know, the pay, all these extracts. You should only focus on that part of the extract where uh, the, the writer is talking about that only one element right so uh, you, you should just scan it and just w whenever that uh, comes then you should just focus for example if there is a you know a factory right so there, there is an extract about the factory so uh, the, the person goes into the factory visits different places um, blah 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 but in uh, the question it asks what are the different types of sweets right so you have to just skip everything his introduction coming to the factory going out just go to that part where there's there are the types of sweets right so you should just focus on the types and just try to compare and in this question there is a no need of language okay so you do not have to just you know uh, language analysis you do not have to analyze the language. You do not have to go into the structure and language devices and all that stuff. Simply, you have to just compare uh, whatever you have understood uh, that element from both the taxes, okay? So this question usually takes quite a lot of time. If you get bogged down, you know, reading the whole of the two extracts. So do not waste a lot of time. Right, so if, if this question is of eight marks, you should not uh, take more than eight to 10 minutes for this question, okay? And then, uh, you know, the, these are the uh, mark scheme uh, for the guidelines, right? Show perceptive or details, synthesis and interpretation of both the taxes makes perceptive inferences from both the taxes. So if you see a statement there, you should write something from your own side as well. You have to draw some inferences as well, right? So if it says that the, uh, the, the, the sweet was uh, made of sugar, so you can say that it was very sweet. Of course, if there is a sugar, then it's going to be sweet. So you have to use the uh, inferences. And then you have to give uh, from the textual details, like from the text, you have to quote from the text as well. And uh, question number three, yes, this question has got 12 marks in total, right? So you should be thinking that, uh, you know, 12 to 14 uh, minutes, you should keep 12 to 14 minutes for this one not more than this uh, time. And in this one, uh, they will give you just a one or two paragraph, right? They will give just one source. They will say, read uh, line maybe 12 to 15 or one to, you know, 10, uh, source A or B, 
in any of the source few lines you have to read and then uh, you have to uh, do language analysis in this one okay so I will not go into the details that how you do conduct the language analysis okay so uh, you you have you should look for the mark schemes and previous uh, you know uh, the, the attempted uh, exam questions which I have already done it so you have to do like uh, there are two type of details you have to analyze one is uh, structural details you should include that what is the structure of the text how the the text has been structured like you know it is from the viewpoint structural viewpoint you should mention that structural viewpoint is uh, you know uh, is is it from a narrator or it is is it from the first uh, form second form or the third form or the whole text structure what type of whole text structure is it whether it has been given a chronological order or it has been given just you know in uh, going up and down or is is it a flashback right so there are different kinds of uh, you know uh, structural uh, viewpoints there are structural elements okay then the other one is called language devices language devices so you have to uh, tell that what type of language devices has been used in this uh, you know extract like uh, simile metaphor so these are uh, called figurative language and uh, uh, adverbs, uh, adjectives, long sentences, short sentences, these come into. So all these things you can discuss in question number three when you have to analyze, you know, uh, the language. So the relevant terminologies you have to, you know, mention. Right. So the, the writer in this uh, in this part extract, the writer is using a metaphor to explain uh, something, blah, blah, like this. Right. So you have to say that if this adjective has been used, so what impact this adjective gives us or adverb has been used. So what impact or what visualization we can make out of this uh, adverb. So you have to. Uh, pick up the codes from the text as well uh, writers yeah focus on the writers techniques right so you have to focus on all these techniques and as I told you that this question carries 12 marks and you should aim for uh, 12 minutes 10 to 12 minutes and uh, so th this is about the mark scheme and question number four carries 16 marks. So in this one, you have to make a comparison. Okay, comparison of both source A and B. And uh, here you have to not compare only a small, you know, a paragraph, but the whole of the text. Okay, so you should aim to write four paragraphs here. Or if you write three, still okay. So four paragraphs, and in those four paragraphs should not take more than 15 minutes. So you have to be really quick uh, in just analyzing, uh, you know, the language. You have to analyze here the language, and you have to uh, analyze the techniques. And uh, when you analyze the language, so you have to analyze the language from the structure as well as uh, the language devices both, okay? So uh, you see uh, the, the mark scheme says, compares the ideas and perspectives in a perceptive way, how writer's methods are used, and selects a range of sporting details from the text. You have to pick up from the text 
and uh, understanding of the similar ideas and perspectives in both the texts. So uh, question number five carries 20 marks. And in this, this one is taken from uh, paper one of GCSE exam. And in this one, a statement will be given to you and it will say that whether you agree, whether you agree or no about statement. Okay, so uh, like you see, usually you should agree it, okay? Uh, even if you do not agree, you should not say right outwardly that I do not agree. You see, it suggests like this that the, that the writer is like this. But normally, you should be agreeing to whatever is the statement, but you have to analyze it and explain it and give the details as well. Okay, so uh, you will be given a code analyzing the readings that you will be needing to agree or dis disagree with. Still reading question, so it must be based in the text. So you have to give the quotations from the text as well. Okay, so um, you, per perceptive and detailed evaluation, right, critically and in detail and then selects a range of judicious textual details and develop a convincing and critical response to the focus of statement. Okay, then the last one is question number six and this one is question, and this question is taken from uh, paper two and you should be, it has got two parts, right? So one is the content and organization Another one is technical accuracy. So out of uh, the 40 marks, 16 marks are given for the technical accuracy, whereas 24 marks are given for content and organization. So the writing assessment should not be uh, very difficult for you. So uh, that's all. Uh, I will just uh, show you if I can, yes, the, the practice questions which I had done, right? So um, usually what I plan to do or what I advise you to do is you should be doing in this uh, format, right? In this way, you should be doing. Uh, this is June 2022 exam uh, in which, you know, uh, first you need to do uh, the question number one, which has got four options, A, D, C, H. I think that these are correct, right? And then the question, uh, uh, after question number one, you know, uh, you should be going as per my suggestion to question number six, because uh, the question number two to five, they are reading questions and they may consume a lot of your time. So it's better if you, uh, you know, go to question number six directly because you have to write here something. And when you write here, then uh, you should be planning this to finish this writing in less than one hour, 45 minutes to 50 minutes, so that you have ample time for the other task, right? So in this question, you see it says, holidays do not need to be far away and expensive. They just need to give people a break from everyday life and the chance to relax, right? So write an article for a magazine in which you argue your point of view on this statement. So we have got here a statement which says that, you know, uh, the holidays, you should, you should not be going too far away in expensive places. You should just relax at your home. So whether you can agree on to this line or you can disagree, you have to just write an article you know, based on uh, this statement, right? So um, what I have done is like, uh, I have basically uh, given, uh, you know, a first a heading, right? So this is my attempt. So I have attempted it in this way. So you can just have an idea. So how a holiday should be spent. So this is a question, right? The, the question which I'm going to discuss. So, um, Holidays are much awaited occasions which do not come so frequently, but when they arrive after 
much longing they fly away so quickly that everyone is left with their eyes wide open in disbelief right so this is just an opening paragraph in which i've tried to uh, give it you know a, a real feeling because whenever there are holidays holidays finish so quickly so i have given this and you should try to you know write uh, the difficult words as well you know that, that it, it should not be very simple so uh, like you see much longing i use this word this is not commonly used you know a difficult word so uh with with eyes wide open and disbelief like this holidays are sometimes uh holidays are sometimes which everyone waits for without the distinction of color age gender caste and creed right so holidays are some things which everyone waits without the color age gender caste or creed right because the older people and kids everyone likes holidays right so it is holidays are truly non racist and equal opportunity provider so i've tried to make bring you know a kind of humor here and i'm uh, telling that the holidays are uh, kind of uh, you know they are holidays are non racist <clears throat> and uh, they are participated and celebrated globally the children wait for a break from their tedious studies the young wait for holidays to meet their lovers and the elders find it an opportunity to escape from their bossy bosses right so you can use just different words as well i've just used this one and the old also want holidays to see their loved loved ones who seldom come to see them but how holidays should be spent ideally should it be a fun fair far away traveling and spending all the hard earned money or it should be just relaxing occasion sleeping and watching movies all day long right so i have in the introduction paragraph i have just you know introduced what the holiday is and then i have given the critical questions right which i want to discuss in my uh, article we aim to answer these intriguing questions in this article right or you can say i aim to uh, answer then in the first paragraph like uh, i have uh, you know uh, given my main argument so whatever is your strongest argument whether for or against you should give you know in the first paragraph so in which i say holidays are without any doubt a break from the work so the people who work even during the holidays do not fall in the category of living humans so again i am trying to bring a humor in and i am saying that the people who work during holidays they are not humans right better we do not discuss them here and they are special kind of social animals and in bracket i am saying that humans are considered social animals so they are a special category they are not humans so which need a separate discussion our discussion here focuses on the merits and demerits of sitting at home in front of tv screens sipping coffee all day long or going on an expensive trip far away during the holidays there must be a travel but how long and how far away should this decision should be based on the depth of the pocket of the individual and the level of curiosity right so the 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 deep pockets i'm bringing in this kind of uh, metaphor here right so whenever you write you should use all the language devices try to like the you should use a metaphor uh, simile uh, you know uh, all all these language devices the structural devices you should try to incorporate in them so blah 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 i will not go into this detail but uh, in the first one i'm saying that uh, it is a must that you should go on a travel because there are you know a lot of things which you can uh, enjoy like a travel can let you to meet 
new and old faces, known and unknown cultures, make new friendships and revive the old ones. If you do not travel, then uh, you have a sedentary routine. And in the second one, I'm going that if you sit at home, what are going to be the problems? My main argument in the first paragraph is that uh, you should go for a travel. What are the benefits, right? So which I give there. In the second paragraph, I'm saying that if you do not go on the travel, what are going to be the problems, right? So you will be inviting different diseases to make your body a home. So this kind of a bit of fancy words, you should use it, right? So the consumption of electricity and other resources you will consume at your blah, blah, blah. So in this one, uh, second paragraph is mine. What are the, you know, uh, in the first one, it was the benefits of traveling. And in the second one, uh, the, the losses which you will occur if you do not travel. So uh, in the la in the third, in this one, in the next one, so uh, I'm trying to conclude, right? So, but ideally you should have one more paragraph if you want. I've written it, you know, my introduction was a bit longer. So I, I had finished this within an hour. Uh, so that's why, you know, I've, the, the, this one is my fourth paragraph is in the conclusion, basically. So in this one, I said the travel has many benefits. It is entertaining. It is enthralling. It is learning and it is fascinating, right? So you should use a lot of fascinating vocabulary as well. Uh, with the family, meet their friends and love, it, it provides solace, blah, 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 right? So conclusion. So after doing question number six, I left the question number two because in question number two, it had got just, you know, eight marks and we had to compare quite a lot of things. So in this one, there was just, you see, you need to refer only to source A from line 24 to 38, you see? These are just nine or 10 lines. How does the writer uses the language to describe the rain and storm? So I have to read these 10 lines only and just explain how the writer is using language features. So here I said it in the first line, I'm trying to make a point. The rain drops were big and they were falling continuous without any break. The use of adjective for falling of raindrops is thick and steady, suggest that it was raining very heavily. So I am, you know, adjective. So they've used the adjective. So I'm mentioning about the adjective. Okay, the writer adds sensory details while explaining the ground conditions in the rainfall. So sensory details are the kind of details if in the text like I could see uh, seeing hearing touching or something like that because the writer says that the falling of water you know balls on the dry ground sounded like metallic balls it says the water was flowing down just like a metallic balls so uh, you know it, it, it is uh, you know uh, the steam looking dust particles into the air. So it is using, the writer is using a sensory details with the senses, right? So it, you can observe with the senses. So I am using this in this way. So these detailed explanations show that the earth was dry and heavy watery drops were pounding like metallic balls on the ground. So uh, then coming over to the second paragraph, the writer uses onomatopoeia, right? This, this means that if you use different sounds in, in the text, or that is called onomatopoeia, while describing the situation in the campsite. The windows were slammed, slammed shut, and the wind was rambling to and to help the reader visualize the ongoing situation in the campsite. Okay, so the people were in hurry due to fast approaching danger and they wanted to secure their belongings. In the third paragraph, uh, I continue that the, the rain 
and the storm enters into further intensity as the time passes. The use of a metaphor battering against the tent canvas suggests that the rain was hitting very hard on the tent canvas and the phrase slashing down gives an image of chopping something and cutting it into pieces. So the writer shifts focus suddenly at the end, hyping the scenario and making it frightening and scary. The shift of focus from heavy rain to the thunder and storm captivates the reader's attention more precisely to the change of situation. So this is how I have uh, analyzed the language of those 10 lines, right? So I, I discussed it. Um, the writer is using language devices like, uh, you know, here, uh, onomatopoeia. I discussed about it. I discussed about, uh, you know, uh, the metaphor it is using. And then I discussed that the structure the writer is using uh, adjective. So whatever you can find in them, you should discuss that. And after question number three, I've come back to question number two, right? So in this one, you have to refer both the sources and the writer in source A and source B uh, stay in a very different camping sites. So there are two sources. The Both the sources are uh, discussing different camping sites and uh, use details from both the sources to write a summary of what you understand about the differences between the two camping sites. Now, you do not need to, you know, go to very much details and reading everything. You have to just focus on the differences between the camping sites, right? So that's what you have to focus and write just two paragraphs, not you know quite a lot so i say that the source a and source b depict quite contrary settings of mood and scenery of the camping site in source a claims that the allures of the site were not quite sparkling right the visitor was not quite dazzled by the beauty of the site because they have already been to this site before in contrast the campers of site B are the first time visitors to the place. Therefore, their enthusiasm is very much alive. They are fascinated by the pristine, unspoiled. You see, I have put this one, uh, you see, under this uh, hyphen. So that means that I've taken this quotation from the text in exquisite surroundings so i've used a words fancy word of exquisite for beautiful surroundings so one and two the campsite in source a was being frequently visited by the other two tourists at blah blah and in question number four compare how the writers convey their different thoughts and feelings about camping experience in your answer you could compare their different thoughts and feelings about camping experience, compare the methods they use, and spot your uh, response. So here again, I am comparing both the sources and how the writer is using the methods as well. Okay, so compare the, the first their thoughts, what do they think of it, and then how the writer is using the method. So in source, so in this question number four, you have to use the structure, language, and you know what the feelings as well. So the first line you should try to write from the blog, right? So in source A, uh, Kennedy narrates her camping experience in France during the late 20th century. This information you could get at the start of the text. And while in source B, American writer Warner describes his camping adventure. Okay, so this line just introduced what these two texts are about. And then you can just give a brief summary. Despite a quite contrary uh, mood environment and, uh, you know, a scenery in both the extracts, 
the weather behaves similarly soaking up the campers in both the writings so i've given that the mood is different environment is different scenery is different but the weather is behaving similarly both the sources are based on the structural viewpoint of narrator so i'm giving that what type of structure is there viewpoint of the narrator who is experiencing themselves the unfolding of events both are flashbacks of their experiences okay there's a flashback and then in source a uh, kennedy does not seem to have liked the idea of travel and camping the tone of the writer has a lackluster approach while in source b the writer seems to be motivated for these adventures right so i'm doing the contrast in one one is motivated in the other one the other is not motivated so source a the writer is dreadful and dreadful about the holiday travels and she uses the adjective awful for going to holiday the writer uses the phrase assault courses of the mind and body to describe the holiday suggesting that they are tiring and laborious for physical as well as mental perspectives in contrast the source we claims that escape from civilization and returning to the primitive lifestyle is the real essence and bliss of holidays so i'm giving the contrast in both of these you know uh, text and then in source a uses short paragraphs quite frequently to make a shift of the narrative from one side to another while the source b has a continuous flow of paragraphs right so i gave a structural touch that what type of structure is there in the language and then uh, the source it changes the context and moves from one character to another showing an inconsistent approach of description while source uh, has a smooth explanation of events i should have written source b here i've not i missed it so both the sources face a similar situation of rain and storm and their sleep being uncomfortable in source a the writer is wary of this situation when it says that a storm uh, a storm fractured the skies we clung together terrified the adjective terrified indicates the writer did not enjoy the moment while the source be the writer is quite contented despite his world has been restricted by the rain to only 10 feet square the writer in source b has a remorse for leaving the nature spoiled while the source a the writer does not have such feelings so in this question number four you see first i introduce and then i say how do they feel and then i you know uh, analyze the language and the structure uh, you know you know the structure and the language devices both so uh, question number five you will have right uh, from from the same sources you will have a statement and you have to argue your point of view in that right so that is i think all I will, uh, you know, I've done quite a lot of practice on this, you know, June 2022 and uh, yeah, November 2021. So quite a couple of papers I've done practice myself and, uh, you know, I will put up a link so you can have a look at these ones. But, you know, a disclaimer, these are the work of a student. So please, please do not think that this is some expert work okay so there may be a lot of mistakes this is not the perfect one so but whatever it is i've practiced quite a lot so i think when you are appearing in this exam you should also be doing at least five or six you know papers and before that there is some other right and you know about uh yeah up to june 2018 to 2022 I've done five or six years questions, papers, solve them. And before that, there are, you know, the writing styles, language devices, and all these, you know, what are the adjectives, adverbs, uh, exaggeration, uh, onomatopoeia, alliteration, repetition, 
personification, metaphor, simile. So these all are the techniques. You should be remembering what are these because uh, you, you have to use them, right? If the writer is using personification, you have to say when you analyze the language that the writer is using personification uh, and then you have to pick a quote from uh, you know the text that uh, in this you know the writer is using personification and what type of impact it is giving to the reader you have to mention that as well so uh, guys I think that's all about this a star equivalency test uh, hope uh, you it, it gets you you know some kind of information and uh, it is helpful uh, please do not forget to press the like button if you think that this is helpful.